Hi everybody, hope you're all well. I think this is the third variant Italiero release, I think. Now ordinarily, I wouldn't have bought this kit, but there's a nostalgia connection to the Sterling. Out of all the four engine British bombers of the Second World War, the Halifax is the bomber for me. Talking of which, I do wish Rival would reissue their Halifax, although that kit has its issues as well. But anything's better than nothing. So the Sterling, I remember buying the Airfix kit back in 76, give or take a year or so either side, in Kings Link. Getting back on the bus, rushing back to Marham, opening the box, finding that beautiful light blue plastic and the bonus of the tractor and the bomb trolleys. What more could a kid want? I do like it when manufacturers add a bit more than just the kit on the box. So it was just that touch of nostalgia with buying this kit, and that's all it was. As I said, ordinarily, I'd look at it, but I wouldn't have bought it and I wouldn't have built it. Now the kit isn't without its issues, as far as I'm concerned. Now the heavy recessed panel lines, they do look in your face, but in the end, they don't look too bad. Personal opinion once again. It's a shame about the sink marks in the transparent parts and also the heavy attachment to some of the more delicate parts and even the detailed parts. Now the other thing that stands out are the injector pin marks. They're everywhere. Italiari must have had a box full just to throw in this kit. But then again, that's what modeling is all about. You sort these problems out using your skill, if you want to. So, if you're interested, let's take a look and see what I did with this kit. The decals look very good. I especially like the way they've gone about the code letters. Very good. Etch fret looks good. Typical Italiari surface detail, deep and in your face. And by the looks of things, more injector pin marks than you can shake a stick at. Five options in the kit. Care is needed when releasing these parts, as with most kits I suppose, but more so with this one. Just want to show you how crude some of the parts look. A lot of clean up is going to be required just to get these basic shapes acceptable. So enough whining, let's jump straight in. I've thinned down the gills here, simple enough improvement. More pin marks to hide. I've used thin plastic card as a quick fix. Once paint is added here, no one will know. There's various areas of the wing that need trimming or cutting out. Just the nav lights and the carburetor intakes, I think. Well, more pin marks again, just filling in with Mr. Surfacer. Just the ones that will or might be seen. Well, that seemed to take forever that. So most of the parts have been cleaned up, so the bulk of the work is done. As I've gone on, there are certain areas and certain parts that I've already assembled. So we're going to make a start on the undercarriage first. Just 
Just going to let those parts dry before I move on to the other parts. So I'll just put that all to one side to dry thoroughly. Looking at the kit's mud guards, they looked a bit chunky to me. And there may be a quick fix using brass sheet. So I'm just roughly cutting out, mark out the size of the sheet that I need. I should have used scissors here. The brass sheet is wrapped around the plastic part and held in with some tape. This is then trimmed to shape carefully. Peeled off and cleaned up. And this can be used as a template to create the second mud guard. So it's been deburred and rolled into shape. I can fix it to the main undercarriage now. I've marked a centre line on the brass part to aid alignment. Assembly of all those internal gubbins now. The front areas went together with no issues, but the back just needs a little bit more care. A lot to add here, but no locating pins or lugs to aid in positioning. Just the final layout image on the instructions. I started by adding the floor first and then worked my way from there. The turrets are next. I'm just using Tamiya glue here just to hold or tack the etch parts in place. Then with the slightest of touches, added super glue to the etch parts. Only then do I fold the etch parts into the plastic arch frame. I'll add the glazed parts after painting. Now I'm wanting to add all the turrets at the very end of the build if I can. So start with the mid turret and by trimming the lip on the fuse large hole this will make it possible. Gluing the top part will stop it from falling through. I'll tackle the other turrets later and hope I'll come up with a solution for those. I didn't like the gaping slab of plastic in the undercarriage bay so using some evergreen plastic I've given it some visual interest. All made up, of course. The undercarriage. I've added some more detail here, as you can see. Now, because I don't want to add the main undercarriage at this stage, whose stupid idea was that, I've had to make some mods. I've cut the located pins off the undercarriage, and I need this part area to see on something. That something is a block of plastic, which is glued to the inside of the upper wing. I've then had to add some shims to this block, because of the dihedral of the wing. This is so the undercarriage will seat level to the ground. Happy I've got this right, I've added a backing plate to aid in stopping the undercarriage from slipping back. So with a bit of effort, I don't have to add that fragile undercarriage. and I don't have to worry about it getting in the way of the rest of the build. I'm going to give all these parts a coat of Tamiya Black the undercarriage areas as well while the wings are still in the halves, much easier at this stage. Over the internal black in the fuselage halves, I've applied some basic colours. The interior green is a mixture of Tamiya XF5 green, XF3 yellow 
and some XF2 white. And you can see I've added some Vallejo aluminium at the back. Now to bring out all that beautiful, lovely internal detail, which most of it won't be seen by the time these fuselage halves are closed up, I'm going to use some Vallejo paint as a wash. I first wet the whole surface and then add the wash, which is made up of black and ochre brown. The thicker the mix, the more defined the details will be. The front console, the edge part has been dry brushed with Mr. Hobby's aluminium. The outer edges of the decal are representations of the interior green. I had my own interpretation of the interior green, so I had to paint these areas. The turrets, the front one is fiddly, but fitted okay. The mid one gave me some trouble. It didn't want to play. I found eventually that the glazed areas that sit against the gun pivot didn't seat properly and needed trimming. The two transparent parts are glued first and then when dry just slipped over the gun assembly. The rear turret fitted perfectly, gave me no issues whatsoever, but I mustn't forget to add those etched shoots later. Let's get all this put together. Console added, just needed to add the Bombay floor. I've enclosed the internal assemblies between the two fuselage halves just to make sure it all fits before that glue is set. So I'm going to glue the side windows to the fuselage, but unfortunately the windows are riddled with dimpleitis. What a shame. Now the sink marks I'm going to live with, but the gaps around the windows I can't. So a quick easy fix is using Vallejo putty. Just clean it with a toothpick and we're done. One horrible thing I hate about building British bombers is all that greenhouse framing that needs painting. You could source some masks, but I like to paint these areas by brush. I paint as carefully as possible with my wobbly hands and poor eyesight. I'm using Tamiya paint thinned down and I will apply two light coats. Then after about a few minutes, don't want to leave it too long and with a good quality toothpick, scrape off the excess paint. This technique works better with a well-defined frame line. For some unknown reason, I find cleaning the framework up quite therapeutic. Before I close the fuselage halves up, I've had to strengthen up this rear landing bay. While this is drying, I'm going to make a start on painting all the peripheral gubbins. Here I've laid a layer of white onto the bombs and to the props, ready for the yellow. The bombs painted and decaled up. I need to tone these down. Talking of bombs, looking at some of the picks, the cylindrical vein here at the back looks too short. Knock yourself out if you wish to rectify this. So back to the tone down. Here's the before and after. And I've just added a wash of Vallejo khaki mixed with some black and then finished off with a few blobs of white. The props, after the basic colours have been added, I've weathered with a bit of grey pastel at the ends. And then some Tamiya black panel line wash is added at the base and blended outwards with some white spirits. The undercarriage legs are painted black and then dry brush with some Mr. Hobby's aluminium. 
and then the detail is picked out with some Tamiya panel wash. All sealed in with a coat of satin varnish. Now the fitment of the engine to the cowl I found tricky. It's held and located by three tiny pins which gave me trouble in aligning the engine block to the cowl. I still wasn't confident of the strength and fit of these parts so I ended up reinforcing the engine with some plastic supports at the back. Belts and braces. Oh by the way it's very important to take note or heed of the head-on image in the instructions of this assembly. It's just a pity they didn't add the cow support positions as well. A bit of guesswork here on that. I had more issues attaching the cow assemblies to the lugs on the wing nail sails. Locates with confidence. I ended up trimming some of the rear prop pins, which helped, but not really the best solution. Carburetor intakes and oil cooler intakes fitted with no issues. Just the aeons fit now. I need to take care of these seams next and I've also painted the transparent parts. I'm just going to take these into position for now, just in case after sanding I need to get rid of any crap inside. Nothing worse than crap in your cockpit. So the fuselage is clean and plastic particle free. I can add the transparent parts now. Now for the main canopy I'm only going to glue the front and the back as I'm worried I may get some capillary action with those raised internal sides with the glue. Let's get the wings and tail on. So I'm ready to start the main paint job. As you can see, I've masked off all the relevant areas, I hope. So I'm gonna start with the front cowls first, I don't know why, and the exhaust and apply a coat of Tamiya Black. I then masked off the black and applied AK's Extreme Metals Matte Aluminium around the engine nacelles. The idea is to make this show through later, maybe. So I need to transpose this pattern to the model. I'm going to do that by marking it with a pencil. Quicker and easier than enlarging this print, cutting it out and adding it to the surface. I think. Now I already had some colours already mixed. I've used on previous models, but just to make sure that the shades are right, I've applied the colour to some plastic card and just to see what it looks like when it's dry. So we'll call it the earth brown, it's been added. Then I'll mask that off ready for the dark green. Ready to peel all this off and see what horrors lie beneath. Fingers crossed. So not too bad, a few touch ups here and there to sort out. And then once that paint's thoroughly dry, I'll give the whole surface a light sand. So I've all masked off ready for the black, which is Tamiya black mixed with a bit of deck tan. It's all very black. So I've just been messing around with the surface just to break it up. And I've used some Tamiya deck tan, thinned down considerably, and just picked out some panels on top. So I've got all my transfers ready to go. Thankfully not many. I'm not a big fan of those ant infested deco sheets. So before I go crashing on and adding these decals to the kit, I just want to test them out. So using some of the spare ones, I've added one decal to the surface as it is, and then one with some decal solution. And looking at the results, I'm confident I don't need any solution adding to these decals. So some of the code letters were slightly fiddly but I personally prefer them that way, rather than a big decal with lots of carry film to sort out and faff about with later. So I'm back to those cowls. Remember those? I'm using Mr. Hobby's iron and dry brushing it onto the black in a stippling action. I don't want to cover the whole area, I do want some of that black to show through. While that's drying, I'm going to add a panel wash. I'm adding Flory's wash, the best thing since sliced bread. 
Back to those front cowls again. And I'm adding a mixture of two colours. Making a rusty colour. And once again, using a stippling motion, apply to the surface. So I've sealed everything in with a satin varnish. And as you can see here, I've been messing around with some oils. Next is all that bum for free to add. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I think, is the detail hanging below the front turret has been cut flush. This is so I can add it at this stage. Seeing as there's so much to add underneath, I'll start there. The bombs have been laid out in a dry run as the instructions didn't add up. The wing bombs didn't fit in their race slots at all, so some fudging had to be deployed here. Now for some of my engineering. Perfect. So just the turrets to add, hopefully. Bit of a tight squeeze. So I think I'm done. I'll take some pics. Thank you for watching. And I do hope to see you for the next build.